What's up guys, Tea Party Percy here and welcome back to a new Lost Ark guide. In this guide, I will go through all the important skills and mechanics of the four bosses from the Papunica Void Dungeons. As always, I will only explain the crucial skills. I won't explain every single AoE skill which can be simply dodged by running out of the Red Telegraph. In addition to the wipe mechanics, I will also recommend card sets if necessary and which combat items can be used to make some mechanics easier. I will use for this guide the footage of the two void dungeons on hard mode. In general, the easy and hard version of the dungeons are pretty similar. All the skills of the boss on hard mode will hit you way harder, but other than that, if there are any major differences between those, I will of course point it out. Some of you may ask why should I bother with the hard mode when I can do it on the easy mode. There are a few benefits if you do the dungeons or the white dungeons in the hard mode. One of the benefits are the materials. You get way more materials to craft the void dungeon gear, which means you will get the gear completed way faster if you do the dungeons on hard mode. In addition to that, if you do the second void dungeon on the hard mode, it will always drop a random piece of gear from one of the three possible void dungeon sets. Even if the piece you get dropped is the wrong set, you can still dismantle it and get some of the materials back, which you can use to craft the set you want to go for. Before we start, one more thing. There will be timestamps for this video, so if you are here just to know about the mechanics of a specific boss, you can skip to that part of the video. Now, let's get started with the first Papunica Void Dungeon and the two bosses. Both bosses of the first Papunica Dungeon will do dark damage, which means it is recommended to use one of the card sets which will give you dark resistance. In addition to that, Scarecrow and Fire Bombs are recommended items. I will explain later in which situations you should use those items. Now, the first boss of the first Papunica Void Dungeon has a weird buff mechanic. Every time you impair the boss, which means every time you deplete the purple bar below the HP bar of the boss to zero, which will make him in the down state or the impaired state, he will get an attack buff. Once he has three attack buffs, he will do some weird one-shot mechanics and all his skills will deal insane amount of damage. So you have to prevent reaching three stacks. At least it shouldn't happen at the start of the fight or mid of the fight. So before you start to fight the first boss, make sure that you remove the impairment increase runes from your skills. If possible, blasters or classes which have an impairment buff for the entire party, they should remove the tripod so that you have more time to deal damage before he gets impaired. So your main goal for this boss fight will be to keep the attack buff at 2 or below. There is only one way to reduce the attack buff, which is the grab mechanic. One of the players need to get grabbed by the boss intentionally and the other three can use this situation to down the boss again. If this happens, the boss will lose one of the attack buffs. The tricky part is to know when the boss will grab. Here is a tip. There is an attack which I will call the cardinal may strike. Because the boss will swing in all four cardinal directions and then end the combo with the big AOE in front of him. Every second time he uses the skill, that is a signal to jump in front of the boss and wait for him to grab one of you guys. Make sure that there are more than one player in front of him because the grab hitbox is pretty narrow. To increase the chance that the grab is successful, make sure once again that in best case that all of the players jump in front of the boss as soon as the boss is done with the May Strike combo. So to sum it up, basically you go to the boss, impair him once, he will have two attack buffs, you wait, make sure that you pay attention to the purple bar once it's on the red area, stop dealing damage, wait for him to get to the grab mechanic, let one of the players get grabbed by the boss and then interrupt him. He will lose one attack buff. After that, you can impair him one more time if needed and he will go back to two stacks and then you will repeat the same process again and again. 
This is a pretty straightforward method and it's one of the easiest mechanics out of all the bosses which will follow in this guide. There are two more skills which I want to briefly mention because they can hurt you a lot or one shot you especially in the hard mode. The first one is the roar. So as soon as the boss roars just get away from the boss. He will do a spin attack which will most likely one shot most of the classes in hard mode. The boss will also frequently spawn from his hands and dark orb which will chase down one player that player needs to run away from his teammates and then trigger the orb by dodging through it or use any movement skills through it so that it explodes on the spot if you trigger this orb in between all the other teammates everyone will take damage and will be knocked down which might be really bad in certain situations and the final tip is if the boss has two stacks and only two or three bars left you can ignore the grab mechanic and just go for it even if you impair him and break him you should be able to dps down the three bars pretty fast before he can do any of the one shot mechanics now let's move on to the second and final boss of the first paponika void dungeon the clown this boss is to be honest harder than the second boss of the second paponika dungeon on hard mode so pay attention. First of all, you can put back all the impairment runes and your normal skills which might have a lot of impairment because for this boss fight, having a decent amount of impairment will be useful. This boss will also heal over time through the entire fight if he doesn't have any abnormal stats on him applied. Which means make sure that you have always a burn, poison or any abnormal status effects on him applied. Otherwise, once again, he will heal over time. The boss will also change the scenery or the battleground once he reaches 16 and 6 bars. Which means he has 3 phases. You will encounter him on the first phase and once he reaches 16 bars, you will be teleported to the second phase on second area. For this particular stage, I would recommend to turn off all the skill effects from your party members because it will be so hard to see the animations of the boss skills if there are too many skills on your screen. And of course, once he reaches six parts, he will teleport back to the first stage. For this particular situation, I recommend it to bring some scarecrows. So every time he changes into a different stage, run to the closest wall and place a Scarecrow. This will give you a short window if the Scarecrow manages to taunt the boss successfully to deal tons of damage. Now let's talk about the skills of the boss. The first one is the Cheat skill. He will occasionally spawn two AoEs next to each other and one of the AoEs will despawn first and that is the Cheat AoE. That one won't even hit. The second one, which will have a longer animation or will last the longest, will be the one which you need to stay out from. Next, we have the Disco Balls. <laughs> he will also occasionally spawn the Disco Balls, which will trace down some players. And once they are in proximity of one of the players, they will change to one of the two totems. Either to a black totem, which will explode after a while, or to a red totem, which will apply a debuff on every player close to it so that every skill will use more mana or class resource. Those two totems can be ignored if the boss fight is not too close to those totems. But if you're fighting too close to those totems, you can easily destroy them by using any impairment related skills. Next we have the love bondage. This skill can be used in the second phase or in the third phase. The boss will randomly imprison three of the players and the last remaining player has a narrow window to free the three players. The first three imprisonments can be lifted by simply using multi-hit skills. It doesn't matter how much damage they do, it's only important how often they tick or how often they deal damage. In this case, the firebomb will be the most useful item, especially if all the three players are close to each other. Just throw the firebomb and do some skills which will hit multiple times and free them as soon as possible. Otherwise, a AoE will appear below each player, they won't be able to dodge out of it, and most of the players will get one-shotted in hard mode. If you succeed doing so, don't be too happy too early because the last player who was actually free at the start will get imprisoned a few seconds afterwards, 
and he will have a different kind of imprisonment. For this one, you actually need to deal damage. It's not about the hits, it's about the damage. So you have to do some high damage skills to free this player. Next, let's talk about the boss on the ball skills. There are three variants of the skill and you have to pay attention to differentiate between those three. First one is the mirror ball mass spawn. This will only happen during phase two. Boss will teleport to the center and stand on the ball and he will start spawning random balls or mirror balls around the area. Make sure that you spread out into the four cardinal directions and destroy as many balls as possible. If there are too many balls at the same time on the stage, the boss will do a one-shot AOE attack. Next variant is the bombardment skill. If the boss jumps on the ball on any other place and just stays still, that's a signal to spread out immediately. Shortly after that, the boss will spawn multiple airstrikes on each of the players, which might overlap if you are too close to each other. To avoid those airstrikes, you just need to make one step after each hit. Pay attention to the footage in the background. The last variant is the boss on the ball chase. If the boss starts to walk slowly towards a player, that indicates the boss on the ball chase. He will jump on the ball and then start to chase down one player. That player should run away and at the same time the other three players should follow the boss closely but not too close. Because similar to the other boss on the ball mechanics, every time you succeed one of those three mechanics, the boss will trip and fall down. This will give you like a 2 to 5 seconds window to deal a lot of damage. So don't miss these opportunities. The next skill is the love screen. You will see a flashy animation on your screen. Don't get distracted by it because as soon as it ends you have to jump out. Otherwise you will get hit by a big AOE. Next skill on the list is the ricochet balls. The boss will focus on one player and and shoot three balls in his direction. Make sure that you turn the boss away from the other three teammates and if possible, point the boss towards the nearest wall. Otherwise, the balls will jump and ricochet too often and there is a higher possibility that it will hit you. In hard mode, two of those hits can kill you. And the last skill or mechanic you need to pay attention to is the key input. The boss can use this skill during the second or third phase Everyone see on their screen a certain sequence of key inputs. You have to type the correct keys in the right order. So from left to right. And if you do it correctly, the stun will be lifted and you can move out of the AOE, which will follow shortly after this sequence starts. If you input one of the wrong keys, you have to restart it and you might miss the chance to run out of those big AOE circles. Now that you know the skills of the two bosses of the first, Papunika Void Dungeon, let's talk about the second Papunika Void Dungeon. The first boss of the second Papunika Void Dungeon starts with the special attack buff. This will not only increase the attack damage of the boss, in addition to that every time the boss hits a player he will apply a debuff. Once the debuff reaches 3 stacks the player will be stunned. The buff and the debuff mechanic can be removed by depleting the purple impairment bar of the boss below the HP but you have to do that before he changes into fire phase. I will explain later what the fire phase actually is. So make sure to take impairment related bombs and skills if your team doesn't have enough impairment focus classes. Next we have the totems. The boss will spawn totems frequently which will buff boss damage or reduce the damage he takes. Those totems only spawn during the normal phase and will disappear once the boss changes into the fire phase. During the normal phase you have to focus on destroying the totems as soon as possible, especially in the hard mode. The player who destroys the totem will get a dark aura around him which will imprison him a few seconds later. Teammates can free the player by attacking him. So make sure if you destroy a totem that at least one of the teammates is nearby or close to you. Now let's talk about the fire phase. The boss will rotate frequently between fire phase and normal phase. 
Once he ignites the entire stage, he will be surrounded by a water circle. Everyone standing outside of the water circle will take a stacking burn damage. So make sure that you stay always inside the circle, at least most of the time. Now, let's talk about the skills you need to pay attention to. The spin attack. There are two spin attack variants, but the one I want to talk about is the second one and the longer lasting spin attack, followed by a devastating AoE, which can, once again, of course, one-shot people. Once the boss goes into the fire phase, he will usually use the normal spin attack first, and a few seconds after that, the hard-hitting one. There are a few options to negate the spin or the follow-up AoE damage. The first one, use the respite potion, which will make you invulnerable for a few seconds. The second option is to use the defensive awakening like the one from Bard or Warlord to reduce the damage the party takes during this skill animation. Next skill is the counter attack. The boss will beat his chest which is an indicator for the counter attack. Everyone should stop dealing damage immediately, otherwise the boss will do a nuke AoE which will deal tons of damage. So if you spot this skill animation, make sure to ping or to shout in the voice chat to make sure that no one uses any DPS skills. And the last skill which you need to pay attention to is the pizza. Once the boss starts with the pizza animation, focus on dodging the red telegraphs. Don't forget that if you get hit by one of the red pizza slices, you will get the debuff I mentioned at the beginning. Once you have three of those, you will get stunned of course and will most likely eat more slices of the pizza. Now, let's move on to the last boss of the second Void Dungeon in Papunica. This boss has three different states, the Earth, the Thunder and the Enraged state. During the fight, the boss will swap between Thunder and Earth stage on which state you encounter him at the start is random though. For this boss, you need to focus on impairment because there will be multiple impairment checks during the fight. Every time you succeed the impairment check, the boss will swap from Earth to Thunder or from Thunder to Earth state. If you fail the impairment check, the boss will go into the enhanced attribute mode in which he will get in a certain interval a stacking attack buff. To get rid of that mode, you have to deplete his purple impairment bar as fast as possible before he accumulates too many stack of those buffs and starts to one hit with every single skill. If necessary, use impairment bombs. The major difference between hard mode and the normal mode apart from the damage difference of the skill is that the boss will be on the enhanced attribute mode right from the beginning if you do the hard mode. So you have to deplete the purple bar as soon as possible if you try this boss on hard mode. Now let's talk about other important skills and mechanics of the boss which can wipe your party. The first one. While he's on the earth state, the boss can do a memory pattern check. If your party has a slow movement speed in general, you can use marching flag to make it easier. To be successful, you have to pay attention to the pattern flashing at the beginning and memorize the areas which are not marked with the red telegraph. A few seconds after that, you have to jump from one safe spot to the other one according to the pattern shown at the start. Next, while the boss is on the thunder state, he can do the thunder wipe skill. The boss will disappear and the thunder orbs will spawn at the edge of the map. The orbs will chase the closest player and once they hit you, you will be shocked for a few seconds. Shortly after the orbs started spawning, the boss will spawn a huge red circle close to the center of the map. Everyone needs to run into the circle and stay there within a few seconds. If there are less than four players in that circle at the right time, the party will wipe. It will be also an auto wipe if some teammates are missing because they are already dead. So make sure that you spread out at the beginning, but don't run too far away because you need to return to the circle once it appears close to the center. You can use Cape of Swiftness or Marching Flag to dodge the AoEs and the orbs and return back to the center on time if you lack movement speed. Next we have the Star Pattern. At 12 HP bar, boss will teleport to the center and will spawn small circles around him. At the same time, you can see on the back of the boss a star with either 4, 6 or 8 points. 
As you guessed, you have to stay on the circle with the same star within a few seconds. If you fail to do so, the player who stands in the wrong spot will die. This entire game with the safe spots will be repeated two more times, so in total you have to stay three times on the correct spot. Each version of the star can only appear once, which means if the boss had the four and the eight pointed star on the first two checks, the third one will be the six pointed star. Another important info, during the first and third check, it is possible that the correct circle spawns next to each other, which means if you are standing on the correct spot and there is another one next to you, make sure to ping the spot to help your teammates. Only the second check will spawn on the each cardinal directions each of the three star variants once. So make sure to assign a direction for each of the members before the boss battle starts just for this situation. Regardless of if you succeed or fail this mechanic, the boss will go into the enrage state, which I mentioned earlier, in which he will use skills from Earth and Thunder state. Okay, that's it. I hope I covered all the important mechanics. If there are any updates to the mechanics or changes with the patch, you will find it in the comments, I will pin it. And if you have any suggestions, feel free to write it down below in the comments or join the Discord. But if it was useful, make sure to like and subscribe so that you won't miss any of the future guides for Lost Ark. In addition to that, one more question. Do you guys want me to upload the entire run of each of those dungeons in a separate video? Or is it enough for me to explain, just like in this format, the main or important skills? Let me know in the comments. Other than that, thanks for watching as always. See you guys on the next guide. Bye bye, your Tea Party Percy.